Monday, March 18th, 2024, regular meeting of the Gardner City Council to come to order. The clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Brooks. Present. Councilor Craig Cormier. Present. Councilor Darren Lowitz. Present. Councilor Harder. Present. Councilor Heath. Present. Councilor Hegman. Present. Councilor Matt. Present. Councilor T. Vote Munoz. Present. Councilor Tisone. Present. Councilor Tyros. Present. And President Kaczynski. Present. Please rise to recite the opening prayer and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Almighty God, we thank thee for bringing us together this evening, inspire us to worthy deeds and sound decisions, and direct us toward the attainment of the city government. We pray thee to bless and protect all the people of our city, and to so and inspire us that we may deliberate in unity and in harmony. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Now it's one of open meeting recordings. Any person may make a video or audio recording <coughs> of an open session of a meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium subject to reasonable requirements of the chair as to the number, placement, and operation of equipment used so as not to interfere with the, with the conduct of the meeting. Any person intending to make such recording shall notify the chair forthwith. All documents and exhibits used or referenced at the meeting must be submitted in duplicate to the chair as they become part of the meeting minutes pursuant to General Law Chapter 30A, Subsection 20. Is anyone here recording tonight's meeting? Okay. We will begin with the reading of the minutes of prior meetings, which there is none. And next is a public hearing, item 11199, a petition by National Grid and Verizon New England Incorporated, Allen Street to install one jointly owned pole on Allen Street, beginning at a point approximately 430 feet west of the center line of the intersection of Allen Street and Winslow Street, install one jointly owned pole number seven for new houses. The public hearing is now open. Public hearing notice reads as follows. Notice to abutters, March 11th, 2024, to abutters and other interested parties. Pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 166, subsection 22, you are hereby notified that a public hearing will be conducted on Monday, March 18th, 2024, at 7.30 p.m. on the petition of Massachusetts Electric Company doing business as National Grid and Verizon New England for permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public ways. Allen Street, a petition by National Grid and Verizon New England Incorporated to install one jointly owned pole on Allen Street beginning at a point approximately 430 feet west of the center line of the intersection of Allen Street and Winslow Street, install one jointly owned pole number seven for new houses. A sketch of the proposed pole location is attached for your edification, City Council of Gardner, TC, Seraphan, City Clerk. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of the petition? Does anyone wish to speak in favor of the petition? Is there anyone here that wishes to speak in favor of the petition? Okay, is there anyone here who wishes to speak in opposition of the petition? Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in opposition of the petition? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition of the petition? Okay, hearing none, the public hearing is now closed. Okay, we are gonna take two items out of order at this time. On page three of our city council agenda, 
Items 11129 and 11130. Item 11129, a measure confirming the mayor's appointment of Dane Ardell to the position of public works director for term expiring January 4th, 2027. Councilor Cairo. Thank you, Madam President. Director Arnold is our longest serving department head. He oversees and is responsible for municipal grounds, highway, and water and sewer operations in our city. He has been an asset in guiding improvements to our city's infrastructure and having the opportunity to work with the director closely on the public service committee. I can personally say I've been especially impressed with his forward thinking on ways to do things better and his ever uh, present ability to listen and hear differing opinions on topics. The director was especially grateful to his staff for their hard work and thank them for their support. The committee met with the mayor and the appointee on this uh, reappointment. The committee voted unanimously to recommend, therefore I move the appointment be certified. Second. Motion made by Councilor Tyro, seconded by Councilor General Owitz to confirm the mayor's appointment. Is there discussion on the motion? Councilor Heath. Thank you, Madam President. Um, <clears throat> during the committee meeting, I should have went ahead and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the appointments committee meeting, I should have went ahead and uh, made this comment earlier. There was an uh, um, interaction that me and Mr. Uh, uh, Director Arnold had where I had a phone call one day by a constituent who was not happy with a said situation. Um, she called me while I was at Starbucks <laughs> and she just happened to be driving by Starbucks. Caught me in the parking lot. I told the constituent I will ride to her house, go ahead and go see what was going on. I followed her to her house and to my surprise, Mr. Arnold was already there. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead, I don't know if you remember that situation, but I just wanted to go ahead and put that on record that I was amazed with that right there and surprised myself. And, um, you know, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor Harder? Yes. Um, I want to thank Director Dean Arnold. I've been here for um, 13 years, and through those years, he always answers my calls when I have problems in the ward, whether it's the first one in the morning or the la last one of the day. He does a really good job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Item 11130, a measure confirming the mayor's appointment of Michael F. Ellis to the position of Senior Citizens Director for term expiring January 4th, 2027. Councilor Tyros. Thank you, Madam President. I'll be recusing myself from this item due to our personal relationship with the appointee. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Hagelin. Thank you, Madam President, and through you to the Council. Uh, Mike Ellis, as Senior Citizen uh, Center Director, is completing his first three-year term as the Senior uh, Citizen Center Director. We met with him earlier this evening, uh, and in that time and in our discussions, you know, with a glowing recommendation from the mayor, uh, Ron Darmek, who was also present, Chair of the Council on Aging, in support of uh, Mr. Ellis for this position and this reappointment. Um, it was clear just the great work he's done in raising the profile of the Senior Center, uh, and the efforts they've done to increase programming and to raise awareness of this resource for people in our community. Um, so with all those positive re recommendations, and I think something notable to point out to everyone as well, is that given their small staff, you know, he's one director, a couple of staff under him, they really rely heavily on volunteers. And in this past year, he let us know that they've had over 400 volunteers committing 10,000 hours of service to the Senior Center, which is equivalent of around, they estimated, $270,000 that the city is not incurring in, in, in a way saving. So I think that's testament to the leadership that he has shown in that position. And so I move for the appointment of Mr. Ellis to be certified. Second. second. Motion made by Councilor Hagelin, seconded by Councilor Mack to confirm the mayor's appointment. Is there a discussion on the motion? Councilor Mack? Um, as a member of the Public Welfare Committee, uh, the chair for the last two years, uh, two terms, I have to say that um, I have gone to the Senior Center on many occasions. Um, I read every newsletter and every email that we receive. Um, I just want to commend um, Director Ellis because we have a very robust Senior Center with the resources and the programs they offer. I was there today helping to serve um, the St. Patrick's Day dinner. Um, and I can't say enough, I'm looking forward to their move to the new Waterford Street building because I think the Senior Center, the Council on Aging, and everything that they do for our senior citizens can only grow um, and offer um, more and more um, different programming and uh, for those that don't um, take advantage of it please do so please go on their website please get their newsletter whatever you need Re please reach out because it is a tremendous asset to the city thank you thank you counselor further discussion 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion passes. At this time, we will take a brief recess of the meeting to swear in those who have been appointed here this evening. We will reconvene after the swearing in is completed and call the meeting back to order at that time. So Dean and Mike, come on up. Communications from the Mayor, appointments, <clears throat> item 11207, a measure confirming the Mayor's appointment of Linda Dembeck to the position of Disability Commission Member for term expiring March 4th, 2027. Councilor Tyros. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move to refer this item to the Appointments Committee for study and report. Second. Motion made by Councilor Tyros, seconded by Councilor Heath to refer the item to the Appointments Committee. Is there discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Communications, item 11208, a measure authorizing the FY 2024 Community Development Block Grant Mini Entitlement Plan. I'm going to ask the mayor to um, come forward to give us some information regarding this item, please. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, this is the annual resolution that comes before the City Council uh, every year. Gardner is what's considered by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development as what's called a mini entitlement community. That means we are not uh, have we are not big enough as a city to be gateway status. If we were a gateway city, we'd have these funds directly come to the city annually, and we wouldn't have to apply for them on an annual basis. Gardner meets all the criteria to become a gateway city, except you need to have at least thirty-five thousand in population in order to qualify for that designation. Where we're at twenty-one thousand uh, residents here in Gardner, that's why we have to apply for these funds on an annual basis. Uh, the application that's before you covers a, uh, various different. Uh, activities but I do want to stress that this is a grant application the funds are not guaranteed however a supportive vote of the City Council is required to submit this 
application to the Commonwealth's Department of Housing and Livable Communities, uh, which is the pass-through for these federal funds, by March, 5th, uh, March 25th of this year. Uh, so that's why uh, I want to thank the Council President for allowing me to speak on the matter and putting this before the City Council uh, from when Director Beauregard was able to submit this to the City Council for consideration. Uh, these funds annually do cover the cost of several different things throughout the city. The majority of the salaries that are funded for the Department of Community Development and Planning are funded out of this grant. Uh, a large portion of the director's salary, about 90% of the assistant director's salary, some portions of the, uh, uh, the financial coordinator's salary for the Department of Community Development and Planning come out of this grant. If you look at uh, the budget, which is the grid matrix, uh, that's included in your packet. That's what that $125,000 covers is the salaries for those individuals in that department. Uh, additionally, there are certain things that these funds have to be used to, a certain percentage has to go towards social services within the city's limits, and then the rest can be used towards other projects of community development, the removal of blight, things of that nature. Uh, next year's, which I do want to stress, these are funds to be used, applied for this year to be used in next year. So these funds would not be used until 2026. Uh, include the demolition of the former School Street School Building located at 53 School Street, which is, um, has been condemned by the Building Commissioner due to its current state of condition. Uh, the goal would be to demo uh, demolish the property, extend a parking lot for Jackson Playground that's there that currently has no dedicated parking to it, uh, and then improve some park space there. The land underneath the school is subject to Article 97 protections of the Commonwealth's Constitution. Uh, that is because part of the land that it was built on was originally taken by the city to form Jackson Playground. Uh, and where, when the Commonwealth adopted Article 97 via a ballot measure uh, in a local referendum at a state election, it did not grandfather properties that were built on the land. It just simply said any land that was purchased for this use is subject to those protections. Therefore, if we wanted to do anything with this land other than either refurbish the building, which is deemed to be too cost prohibitive at this point because it is condemned, uh, if the building was removed to do anything else besides keep it as parkland, we would have to go to an act where the legislature would have to take a uh, roll call recorded vote. Uh, and then have that pass through both the House, the Senate, and then be signed by the governor. So this is the way to get things done in an active way to remove the issues that we've had at the uh, building with different break-in issues, with different structural concerns, issues of fears of collapse and things of that matter, uh, and improving that area of the city to a larger extent. Uh, the social service programs that are included in this year's grant application include uh, $15,000 to go to our Gardner Athletic Programs at Gardner High School and Gardner Middle School. Uh, for the past four years, the city has waived, and by waived, I mean we have budgeted for or paid for in one way or another all athletic user fees for our students at the high school and the middle school. Prior to when we started doing this, students re uh, were charged $100 per sport per season, uh, except for hockey, which was charged $500 per season. Uh, and those were in order for students to be able to play. We wanted to make sure that there were no barriers, especially income barriers or poverty barriers that barred any of our students from being on uh, the teams that they uh, play on. So we have covered that. Some of that has come from the CDBG. The remaining $23,000 is coming from uh, the school department's annual operating budget. Uh, so it's operated there because CDBG funds are restricted to assist social services with people who uh, are in a low to moderate income demographic, so there's income restrictions as to who can qualify for these funds. Uh, but that covers about 150 athletes uh, during the school year through this grant application. The Gardner Emergency Housing Mission offers transitional housing for uh, people in the city facing homelessness. Uh, the housing that they offer is uh, six to nine months, uh, six months normally with the option to extend to nine months uh, for uh, people who are homeless, at the same time, they're receiving counseling for uh, workforce training, job application writing, uh, and then ways to uh, financial benefits, uh, financial management as well, so that once they get through those six to nine months, if they do find housing after that, they can stay a little lot longer under their feet and have a better idea to prevent them from coming back into a homelessness situation. The Voices of Truth. Uh, $12,000 for uh, domestic violence prevention, uh, offering counseling services for uh, individuals uh, who are in issues of domestic violence. Uh, we offer a part-time domestic violence advocate at the police station right now through the city's operating budget. This would fund their advocacy uh, services to work with those individuals above and beyond what uh, Danielle Drew, our city uh, domestic violence advocate, can do at the police, uh, uh, police station with the 20 hours that she works over there. 
Uh, the Gardner Community Action Team is looking to employ a part-time individual helping uh, with all feeding programs of the agency, particularly with their food uh, pantry program and their uh, congregate meals programs. So that's what that uh, $16,000 is going towards. And then again, the rest is the stuff we've already talked about. So for a, a total grant fund of $925,000, just under a million dollars. It should be noted too, uh, that the city will have to uh, provide a match in some way, shape, or form, uh, or, the or the individual uh, organization in the case of the CAC, you'll see that they have a match of $5,216. They will have to come up with that on their own uh, because that, the whole project which is gonna cost that. The CDBG application looks at the full picture of the matter, uh, and then uh, we provide some what we can, and then they provide the total after that. The Gardner Emergency Housing Mission is fundraising the re remaining $5,000 towards their project. And then with the demolition of School Street School, mainly because of the asbestos in the building, uh, there are additional costs associated with that. So just like we did with the other demolition projects we've done for Greenwood Pool, for the Rome Building, things like that, the city would have to appropriate in next fiscal year the $130,300 uh, towards a match, if you will. Uh, for the demolition of that building. So that's the brief uh, rundown of the information included in this year's CDBG grant. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions from the councilors through you, Madam President. Councilor Mack. Um, what are the estimated administrative and uh, delivery costs for 125000 Uh So those are the salaries. The salaries. For the, those are the so salaries of the departments, yes. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you. Any other councilors have any questions for the mayor regarding the subject? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Madam President. Is there a motion? Councilor Dernalot. Thank you, Madam President. I move to authorize the plan. Second. Second. Motion made by Councilor Dernalot, second by Councilor Tyros to authorize the plan. Is there a discussion on the motion? Councilor Tyros? Thank you, Madam President. My hope was to discuss the process surrounding this item at the posted informal meeting that was supposed to take place earlier tonight and to have a discussion and a chance for my fellow counselors to ask questions to the Director of Community Development. I stressed this in my original motion that there were issues found by the state's regular monitoring of the previous year's block grant programs administration that were not catastrophic, but issues nonetheless. Issues that have the potential, consequence, uh, con potential consequences to the completion of previous year's block, block grant projects and potential future funding of projects that we have before us tonight projects that identified in the FY24 plan we must pass tonight because if it doesn't pass the city will not make the application deadline the item was given to the council with at the last possible moment we are put in a position that we are unable to raise any questions or concerns with enough time to actually consider the motion in front of us give feedback and for the steering committee to you know reconsider the items and resubmit the application with our input while I'm disappointed that we are not able to have that discussion before tonight's vote, I do hope this item passes, and I do look forward to having that discussion with the Director of Community Development to ensure the Council is aware of the issues of this program, which administers and distributes critical funding to programs benefiting low and moderate income families and community beneficial projects, that the pro issues are being faced, addressed, and corrected going forward. Because as the Mayor just previously stated, the Council is often asked to appropriate funds to get these projects across the finish line, and these projects are important. They're things that we should consider when we make those votes with all, our other, with all our other considerations that we make here in this chamber. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. <coughs> Orders, item 11209, an order appropriating $77,318 from free cash to the IT department, City Hall cybersecurity system account. Councilor General Lapps. Thank you, Madam President. I move to refer this um, item to the Finance Committee for further study and report. Second. Motion made by Councilor General Lapps, second by <coughs> Councilor Mack, to refer the item to the Finance Committee. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Item 11210, an order appropriating $49,000 <coughs> from free cash to the Mayor's Unclassified Professional Services grant writing expenses. C Councilor General Lapps. I move to refer this item to the Finance Committee for further study and report. Second. Motion made by Councilor General Lout, seconded by Councilor Mack to refer the item to the Finance Committee. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed say no. Motion passes. 
Item 11213, an order appropriating $55,500 from free cash to the Elections and Registration Department for election officer salary and professional services expenses. Councilor General Alex. Thank you, Madam President. I'm, as the others, I move to refer this item to the Finance Committee for further study and report. Second. Motion made by Councilor General Alex, seconded by Councilor Mack to refer the item to the Finance Committee. Is there discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. <coughs> Ordinance. Item 11211, an ordinance to amend the code of the city of Gardner to add a new chapter 15 to be entitled Agricultural Commission. Councilor Mack. Uh, Madam President, I refer this to the Public Welfare Committee for further study and report. Second. Motion made by Councilor Mack, seconded by Councilor General Louts to refer to the Public Welfare Committee for further study and report. Is there discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Petitions, applications, communications, etc. Item 11203. An ordinance to amend the code of the city of Gardner, chapter 600, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, section 41, entitled Handicap Parking, Central Street, from a point 33 feet from the corner of Maple Street, Eastley, for, for 40 feet, two spaces. Councillor Craig Cormier. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is an item that uh, came to the Safety Committee from the Traffic Commission. Um, we did discuss this item. Uh, it is a uh, housekeeping uh, item to uh, codify the handicapped parking spaces that were and that were added when uh, the uh, bike trails were redone around Monument Park. However, before we do that, uh, when the ordinance was written, it was actually uh, conflating two items. Um, so we need to amend the ordinance and change. Um, so we need to uh, change the side from south to north and change the ordinance to um, read adding instead of removing um, so i would move to amend uh, with those changes so you'll have a copy of the ordinance uh, as written motion made by councillor cormier seconded by councillor heath to ref, uh, to send the item to first printing as amended we've all been handed a copy of the amended language is there discussion on the motion all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Item 11204, an ordinance to amend the code of the city of Gardner, chapter 600, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, section 24, entitled Parking Prohibited on Certain Streets, Edgel Street from Elm Street to Lawrence Street. Councilor Craig, uh, Thank you, Madam President. This is another item that was recommended by the Traffic Commission. Um, they are going to implement this on a 60-day trial basis, so therefore we ask for more time on this item. If there is no objection, the committee will be granted more time. The committee will be granted more time. Item one, one, counts. Sorry, counts. sorry, does this need to be referred? Uh, this item, does you met on this item? We did meet on this item okay. already. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Um, the, so that's just for clarification. So these items are in front of the council on the agenda for the first time, Madam Clerk. Yep. Um, but they had a scheduled meeting, and so it, can, it was um, submitted directly to the committee, and so they were able to take them up at their committee meeting without it being referred okay. um, before this All meeting. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, that's Councillor Mack? Um, just for a report of order for clarification, um, when they come back, the safety committee comes back, I'm just having a hard time with Edgell Street from Elm to Lawrence. Edgell Street is this way, and Elm's this way, and Lawrence is here, so I'm just having... If we could get a map of this, is I just having it should be is it Elm Street from Edgel to Lawrence? It's the north side of Edgel, uh, I believe, from Elm Street all the way down to Lawrence. Up Street. to Lawrence. Yes. Okay, so one way. Okay, thank you. I just want clarification. Thank you. So it's, it's clarified. It's clear as we're in. It there. is clear as we're in now. Thank, thank you. you. Item 11205, an ordinance to amend the code of the city of Gardner, chapter 600, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, section 24, entitled Parking Prohibited on Certain Streets, Park Street from Carter Street to Central Street. Councilor Craig Cormier. Thank you, Madam President. Again, we met on this item. This was uh, recommended to us from the Traffic Commission. Uh, this is to codify changes that have already been made because of the bike path that was added to the north side of Park Street. Uh, because of that, they had removed all the parking on the south side of Park Street next to Monument Park. So this is just codifying that. And I move the ordinance to first printing. Second. Motion made by Councillor Cormier, seconded by Councillor Keith uh, to 
Um, send the item to first printing. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Item 11206, an ordinance to amend the code of the city of Gardner, chapter 600 entitled vehicles and traffic, section 24 entitled parking prohibited on certain streets, Pine Street from West Line Street, subtly for a distance of 50 feet. Councilor Craig Cormier. Thank you, Madam President. Again, we met on this item uh, and the, commission, the uh, committee was unanimously in favor. This would um, take the, when you're coming up uh, Line Street onto Park, Park Street, uh, Pine Street, sorry, and if you're looking to your right, this would take the very first parking spot out in front of the library. Um, right now, it's a very blind corner. Um, so the traffic commission was recommending to remove that one spot, which would be roughly 50 feet from the corner of Lane Street onto Pine Street. Uh, again, the committee discussed this with the deputy chief, uh, and we're unanimously in favor. And I therefore move the ordinance to first print, recommend to move the ordinance to first printing. Second. Second. Motion made by Councillor Corner, seconded by Councillor Hardern to um, to send the item to first printing. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 say no. Motion passes. Item one one two one two, election of the city clerk. Councillor Dunlow. Thank you, Madam President. I move to refer this item to the finance committee for a further study and report. Second. Motion made by Councilor General Lau, seconded by Councilor Max to refer the item to the Finance Committee. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed say no. Motion passes. Reports of Standing Committees, Appointments Committee, item 11127, a measure confirming the Mayor's appointment of Thomas Zupa to the position of Building Commissioner for term expiring January 9th, 2027. Councilor Tyros. Thank you, Madam President. While the Appointments Committee has made great progress, I'd like to respectfully request item 11127, 11139, 11140, 11141, 11141. 42, 1143, 1144, 1150. One more time. Okay. If there is no objection, the committee will be granted more time on all of those items. The committee will be granted more time. We have taken up items 11129 and 11130. Item 11134, a measure confirming the mayor's appointment of Carla J. Wajikiewicz to the position of trustee Williams Rockwell Educational Gift Fund for term expiring January 4th, 2027. Councillor Heath. Madam President, sorry, one Councilor moment if you give the interruption, but I'm gonna recuse myself from this item as well as 11135 as an employee of the school department. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Heath. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the committee met with this appointment um, with the mayor. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to try to say her last name. <laughs> However, um, this is a trustee of the uh, Williams Rockwell. This is a reappointment. This is her second reappointment, or I'm sorry, her first reappointment. She just completed her first uh, three-year term. Uh, she's a former elementary school teacher right here in Gardner. Uh, she brings a key perspective to the group. Um, she's the only trustee that has classroom experience. Um, with that being said, the Lord, um, the Lord, <laughs> the uh, the mayor trusts her. We trust her, um, and the committee voted unanimously to recommend. Therefore, I move this appointment to be so. Second. Motion made by Councilor Heath, seconded by Councilor Tyros, to confirm the mayor's appointment. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 As opposed, say no. Motion passes. Item 11135, a measure confirming the mayor's appointment of Robert Rice Esquire to the position of trustee Williams Rockwell Educational Gift Fund for term expiring January 4th, 2027. Councilor Heath. Thank you, Madam President. The committee met on this reappointment with the mayor. Um, Mr. Uh, well, Attorney Bob Rice, um, another trustee of the Williams Rockwell. Um, he's been an active member in the Garden community. He's a former attorney, former director of the library. Um, and also a former state rep. Uh, he, he knows a lot about Gardner, um, and he brings a lot of experience to this role. Um, this is a volunteer position. Um, that being said, the committee voted unanimously to recommend, therefore, I move this appointment to be certified. Second. Motion made by Councillor Heath, seconded by Councillor Tyros to confirm the mayor's appointment. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion passes.
Safety Committee, item 111, I'm sorry, 11086, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, chapter 600, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, section 24, entitled Parking Prohibited on Certain Streets, Comey Street. Councilor Craig. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the DPW installed signs for the police safety day trial on Comey Street last week. Uh, so therefore, we ask for more time to see uh, what the residents' uh, responses to that trial. If there is no objection, the committee will be granted more time. The committee will be granted more time. Item 11115, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, Chapter 600, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, Section 24, entitled Parking Prohibited on Certain Streets, Douglas Road. Councillor Cormier. Uh, again, the uh, DPW and the Police Department is looking to implement a 60-day trial on this in short order. Therefore, we ask for more time. If there is no objection, the committee will be granted more time. The committee will be granted more time. Service Committee, item 11199, a petition by National Grid and Verizon New England Incorporated, Allen Street, to install one jointly owned pole on Allen Street beginning at a point approximately 430 feet west of the center line of the intersection of Allen Street and Winslow Street. Install one jointly owned pole, number seven, for new houses. We had a public hearing earlier this evening on this item. Councillor Tassoni? Yep, Madam President. Uh, the Service Committee would like to request more time as we will discuss this at our next meeting. Um, I th it's to be scheduled next week, I believe. Thank you. If, the, if there is no objection, the committee will be granted more time. The committee will be granted more time. Mm -hmm. Unfinished business and matters for reconsideration, item 11112. An ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, Chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning to add sports betting to the zoning table of uses. Councilor Heath? I make a motion to send the item to second and final printing for passage. Second. Motion made by Councilor Heath, seconded by Councilor Thibault Munoz to send the item to second and final printing for passage. Is there a discussion on the motion? This item requires a two thirds vote <coughs> and we will do a roll call vote on this item. Seeing there is no discussion, the clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Brooks? Yes. Councilor Craig Cormier? Yes. Councilor General Lowitz? Yes. Councilor Hardern? Yes. Councilor Heath? Yes. Councilor Heglin? Yes. Councilor Math? Yes. Councilor Thibault Munoz? Yes. Councilor Tassone? Yes. Councilor Tyros? Yes. And President Kaczynski? Yes. 11 yeas. 11 yeas. The motion passes. Item 11113, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, Chapter 675 thereof entitled Zoning, to amend Section 1070 thereof entitled Marijuana Establishments, to change the method to increase the quota allowed by the code of the City of Gardner. I wanted to take a moment um, to address an issue on this item. I would like to offer clarification for item number 11113. At our previous city council meeting on Monday, March 4th, I announced that a two thirds majority vote was required for this item, which was eight votes to pass. The initial vote on the motion for the item to be sent to first printing was taken, and the result was seven yes and three no votes. I announced that the item did not pass. This was incorrect, I misspoke, and I apologize. Chapter 40A, Section 5 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts states that no zoning ordinance or amendment thereto shall be adopted or changed except by a two-thirds vote of all the members of a city council. And so this applies to a vote made to send the item to second and final printing for passage, like in this case. And then the initial vote to print is not a vote to adopt or change the zoning ordinance or amendment. The general laws actually do not require that any vote be taken on the initial vote to print, which as it applies in this case to item 11113, is the vote to send the item to first printing. By section 24 of the Gardner City Charter, the affirmative vote of a majority of all the members of the council shall be necessary to adopt any motion, resolution, or ordinance. And so in Gardner, we take a vote on the initial um, vote, which would be to send the item to the first printing. And that requires a majority vote, which would be six votes to pass. And so we voted seven to three on the initial vote 
as the vote stands, that would have passed the vote at our previous meeting. So as the general laws say, the final vote, which we would be entertaining this evening, requires a two-thirds majority vote, which would be the eight votes to pass. I sincerely apologize for any confusion regarding this item. Um, I did reach out to the council and send them a clarifying email on uh, Friday, March 8th, once I had confirmed that I had the right information from the general laws as well as the city charter. And the clerk and I had actually both determined the initial and final votes were required a two-thirds majority vote as we do um, speak many times before each city council meeting um, as we were going by what the general laws had said. But um, after we further reviewed it, and we saw that the general laws only require it for the vote to pass it, which is the second vote. Um, we then had determined that uh, the city actually having a more stringent and strict policy, um, you actually can follow that in, the, in this case. And um, well, you do follow that because the state does not require any vote on the initial vote. The city, the city actually does, and it's a majority vote of six votes. I hope that is clear and concise as I could make it. Um, and again, as the vote was taken, the vote stands. Uh, so it, if it had been seven yes and three no, then that would have passed with it being a majority vote. Um, so again, I apologize. We do try to be as thorough as we can. We're actually a little bit too stringent on that one. So the item is before us this evening for um, to be considered as it would have passed and it did go to first printing as the vote stood. So I just wanted to offer that clarification at the beginning. Councilor Mack? Just to, on a point of order, when the motion was made by, I believe, Councilor Heath, the motion was not made to go to first printing at, on the March 4th meeting. It was just a vote on the motion. And even in the agenda, it doesn't, it, it, there was no, on March 4th, there was no notion that it was to go to first printing. Um, so is that still, I guess my, I'm looking at a, a, the order of the vote. The motion was on the item, but the maker of the motion for the vote did not make the motion to vote for first printing. So we're assuming it's going to go to second printing, and that was a vote for first printing, even though that was not the motion at the time. Uh, we'll take a brief, brief recess. Okay, thank, thank you. you.
announce the order? Uh, to clarify the counselor's question, uh, the motion was made by Councilor Heath and seconded by Councilor Charos to send the item to first printing. We just verified um, it will be in the meeting minutes um, and currently it would be on the City of Gardner's YouTube channel um, on our previous meeting. It's 45 minutes and about 32 seconds into the meeting if anyone did want to check it, but we did just double check and verify that it was the item the item's motion was to send it to first printing. Again, it was a seven yes, three no <coughs> vote. Um, and it should have been announced that it did pass to go to first printing. <coughs> so this evening it is back on our council agenda. And it would be considered at this point for its second final printing or passage. This would be the final consideration of the, um, of the item. So that's what I just wanted to add at the beginning of this to explain some clarification. I appreciate everyone's patience um, and, again, um, the opportunity for me to give some clarifying information um, about that error. So thank you. Is there a motion? Councilor Heath? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I make a motion to send the item to second and final printing for passage. Second. Motion made by Councilor Heath, seconded by Councilor Thibault Munoz to send the item to second and final printing for passage. This, is there a discussion on the motion? Councilor Mack? I just want to thank you, Madam President, for looking into this. I just wanted to make sure that we were doing everything, you know, at, through the legal process, whether it passes or doesn't, but I appreciate you for taking the time to clarify. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Brooks? Yes, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I appreciate your explanation for what happened with the vote two meetings ago. Uh, I think it was very clear and, and straightens out some confusion that, that I had after the fact. Um, I do want to say that, that I still intend to vote no on this matter. Uh, I do feel strongly that the uh, business in this community uh, is finite. And I would, as I had said last time, that I would rather have this split between two businesses than four so that there would be two successful businesses operating rather than four competing for smaller shares of the business. and finding ways to uh, cut corners to, to make their profit or trying to grow the business within co this community, which I don't think is a, is a good idea. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor Tyros? I too would like to thank the, the city clerk and the president for uh, ensuring you know, the work going into meetings and after meetings to ensure the job's done thoroughly and correctly. So I think you guys did a good job explaining the situation. And uh, as Councillor Brooks said, I intend to uh, vote the way I did when we sent this to first printing, uh, just a matter of differing opinions on uh, business conditions. So I appreciate councilors' uh, comments and everyone's opinions that they stated last meeting and would be supporting this, this ordinance change. Thank you. Thank you, councilor. Further discussion? Councilor Heath? Thank you, Madam President. Um, I too would like to thank you guys because I'm going to be honest with you. I was sitting here trying to find my notes and I forgot exactly what I said uh, at the last meeting. but. Um, thank you guys for clarifying it, and obviously if it's on YouTube, I said it. <laughs> so, um, but um, going off of um, what Councilor Brooks went ahead and said about the uh, four versus the two, which I understand and I respect that, um, I, I just find it kind of weird on if there was any other business that was coming in the city that had no issues and only brought in revenue. You don't know if it's there unless you know it's there. Um, why restrict it down to two where, you know, if it goes to four and it becomes two, I can understand that. But like, you know, just like gas stations, you know, I, I gotta be honest with you, um, not that I drive gas, but when I drive my, my um, fiance's car, you know, I, I fill up in other cities um, because the gas is cheaper there. And I feel like there's a lot of people who are in the dispensaries who go to other cities because their prices are better there because there's more competition there. So that's how I look at it. I'm not saying that I'm right, but that's just the way I look at it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor Hecklin? Thank you, Madam President, and through you to the Council. As a new Councillor, I also appreciate the clarifications, uh, so thank you for your due diligence on that. Uh, and I, similarly, I, you know, I understood and sympathized with the concerns and opposition raised um, at our last meeting. Ultimately, I did vote in favor of this, as I will again tonight. I feel similarly that allowing for the possibility, of course, doesn't guarantee that we will have more. 
um, but ultimately that's for the market to decide. As was pointed out previously, there's a rigorous process that these establishments have to go through in order to open their doors, and so I feel that that would be vetted ahead of time. Furthermore, as I was looking through our packets, the uh, planning board had voted unanimously in favor of this. Chief McAveen had provided a letter around maybe safety concerns, dispelling many of those. So I appreciate them for, for submitting that information. So for those reasons, among others, such as the potential economic benefits, I will be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? So this does require a two-thirds vote this time around, and uh, we will do a roll call vote on this. And if there's no further discussion, the clerk will please call the roll. Councillor Brooks? No. Councillor Craig Cormier? Yes. Councillor General Alwitz? Yes. Council Hardern? No. Council Heath? Yes. Council Heglin? Yes. Council Mack? No. Council T. Boat Munoz? Yes. Council Tisson? Yes. Council Tyros? Yes. And President Kaczynskis? Yes. Eight yeas, three nays, the motion passes. Item 11180, an order appropriating $625,000 from stabilization to DBW Salt Shed. Councilor Mack? I make a motion to move the order. Second. Motion made by Councilor Mack, seconded by Councilor Tyros to move the order. Is there discussion on the motion? Councilor Brooks? Uh, yes, Madam President. Uh, when the bond market reviews the city's finances and gives the city a credit rating, one thing it looks at is the city's stabilization fund. Increasing value is good, decreasing value is not good. While special purpose stabilization funds like the one the city has for vehicle purchase are expected to fluctuate, the general stabilization fund should not. In his presentation to city council during an informal meeting a few weeks ago, the mayor noted that the stabilization fund is supposed to be reserved for emergencies, ones that aren't covered by insurance or state and federal emergency declarations. He cited what Lemonster is going through as the result of the rain deluge last fall. That is major infrastructure damage with no outside financial support from insurance or the state and federal governments. I also believe that stabilization can assist with temporary cash flow for example, when free cash has not been certified and the city has an unexpected expense that would normally be covered by free cash. The funds are appropriated from stabilization fund and then returned to the fund when free cash is certified, all within the same fiscal year. That, is, that example is slightly different from this request, however, because free cash has already been certified and we are saying that we expect to reimburse stabilization but are not certain, depending on the winter. I am also concerned about future needs. In the near future, if a building needs a new roof or a stormwater line needs major repair, are we going to be asked for additional funds from stabilization? It can be a slippery slope. Having said all that, I accept the mayor's opinion that the salt shed needs to be replaced and that time is of the essence. And while I have made clear my discomfort with the funding proposal, I accept that the mayor is the person who recommends how expenses are funded. I am willing to go along with this recommendation with the expectation that every effort will be made to return the funds to stabilization from free cash after the winter is over, or that future appropriations from free cash will replenish the fund within four years. I also expect that there will not be additional similar requests to fund projects from stabilization. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor Tyros? Councillor Brooks put it very well. Uh, the same reservations I had with this item. I think there's no doubt that the city needs uh, to undergo this project, uh, not only for the safety of our DPW workers working in and near that building, but also for the safety of the citizens and uh, people who visit town in the winter uh, if there were to be a snow event and we were unable to access our salt reserves. I think uh, the mayor has put together a a pretty thorough financial comparison against the loan order, against the considerations Councillor Brooks has brought up. I, I agree with them and I appreciate Councillor Mack's request for more time on this item so that we had more time to sit with it and analyze the decision for ourselves. And I do think the city is making the best decision we have uh, in this situation. I'll be supporting this order. 
Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor Mack? Uh, when I first was elected to the Council, I served on the Public Service Committee. And back then, this was a desperate need of the Department of Public Works. Um, at the time, we were paying more money than we needed to for salt because we could not have um, the uh, surplus on hand because we had nowhere to store it. So this is a much needed item. Um, I just want to clarify the reason I asked for more time is I had a lot of questions. Um, last week I sat down with the director of the DPW um, and two of his staff members and they answered all of my questions, all of my concerns. I saw the site plan, the materials they, they are going to use. Um, so as much money as this is that we are expending out through the stabilization fund, we also have to realize the amount of money that we could also save with the purchase of salt. Um, that we can buy more, not have to rely on neighboring um, communities, and, um, and this is in the best interest of um, the safety of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion? Okay, again, this item requires a two-thirds vote, which is eight votes to pass, <coughs> and we're going to do a roll call vote. The clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Brooks? Yes. Councilor Craig Cormier? Yes. Councilor General Lowitz? Yes. Councilor Hardern? Yes. Councilor Heath? Yes. Councilor Heglin? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Thibault Munoz? Yes. Councilor Tisson? Yes. Councilor Tyros? Yes. And President Kaczynski? Yes. 11 yeas. 11 the motion passes. There is no new business. Council comments and remarks? Councilor Mack? Um, I just want to make a mo uh, uh, mention um, a very unusual approach from the uh, Garden High School class of 2024. Um, they are looking for sponsors for. Um, to, to sponsor prom tables um, to offset the cost of this year's prom for their students. It's $100 to sponsor a table. Uh, more information is on the Gardner High School Facebook page, or you could reach out to one of the class advisors, Emily Miller at the high school, but I think this is a great way to support our students um, as they approach their graduation season. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Councilor Tyros. Thank you, Madam President. Very briefly, I just wanted to uh, make a shout out and thanks to Rep Slotnick, the Council President, and I had the opportunity to tour a new furniture factory in Gardner. Uh, Would You Build It is the name of it. They specialize in uh, kitchen islands and they're made right here in Gardner, handcrafted. Uh, we were able to take a tour of the, uh, the facility, the factory that makes the furniture, and uh, Rep Slotnick was critical in helping get the Wachusa Big Business Incubator up and running, uh, which helped the business. Uh, itself get up and running and the owner had speak to me about had spoken to me rather about uh, some of the challenges he had faced getting up and running in our city and some of the zoning challenges he had faced um, going from an industrial former factory to a current factory the, the amount of red tape and work he had to get involved in it almost uh, hampered his uh, doors from opening actually so I just wanted to thank Rep Slotnick for that opportunity and also kind of sh make a, a little note to think about how we have zoning ordinances in town and what makes sense with our current gardener of today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further council comments and remarks? Councillor Heath. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to um, echo a um, statement that I had during our um, safety committee meeting on Friday. Um, there, there was an incident with a gentleman that um, had a heart attack in one of the uh, supermarkets um, just as recent. and. You know, I, I just want to give a personal shout out and a big thank you and recognition to the Gardner PD, Woods Ambulance, and the um, Fire Department for what they did. Um, because this gentleman, uh, he was unalive and he is doing well and he's back. You know, I ran into his family and they went ahead and they told me and I just want to make sure that they know that, you know, they made a big difference and they are very appreciative um, to them all. So thank you, that's all. Thank you, Councillor. Further council comments and remarks? Seeing that there is none, I'll entertain a motion on the floor to adjourn after the closing prayer. So moved. Second. <laughs> motion made by Councillor Tsoni, second by Councillor Tyros. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Almighty Father, who sees over all, as we adjourn, we thank thee for the opportunity of joint deliberation and action witnessed during the course of this meeting. Bless the Lord, all who are gathered here, and the people whose representatives we are, and do thou attend to our common welfare until our next meeting. Amen. Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you, everyone.